Hello everyone, welcome back to another sketch file. We're on episode 15 now and for the most part of today's video I'll be keeping the real-time footage within this video so that you can see what is going on and how I'm achieving the results that I get with only little minute bits sped up. So a lot of folks ask me how I paint my frozen roses. Now before you learn how to paint a rose that's frozen you're gonna need to know how to actually paint a rose. I'll be painting this rose in acrylic and for the purpose of today's video I've kept things as simple as I possibly can. Also, my way might not work for everybody else. Without further ado, I'm going to take you guys step through step as to what I do when it comes to painting my frozen roses. I'll be working in my moleskin sketchbook, which I already pre-primed with an acrylic galleria gesso, but the same process applies to any other surface that you choose to work on. Using only that of a limited colour palette, I'll be using lamp black, cadmium red and titanium white. Just using a small spray travel bottle, I'm spraying my palette down. I'm just using a clip frame, a glass clip frame, some paper towels placed underneath so I can see the hues and the saturations, a water pitcher and two fairly new pointed round brushes. I'm also a big believer of that, that if you don't look after your brushes your brushes aren't going to look after you so I always either use fairly new brushes or I just keep them clean. So I want all my shadows of the rose, all my deepest shadows of the rose going towards the centre, that's where the petals become the most tiniest and I'm starting out with just mixing ever so slightly a little bit of the cadmium red into the lamp black. Now I don't want anything too saturated at this point because I'm just focusing on the shadows and making small C shapes which break up and look a little bit more abstract as I go outwards because I don't want those C shapes to be perfect. I want them to be a little bit more believable as to where the shadow underneath a petal would fall and form. Where I'm leaving the page barren in between those C shapes is where I am going to go in with the lightest of value at a later point. You'll see that as those C shapes become more bigger and apparent, the shapes become more disorientated and rounded off at the edges. To make this rose more believable, every shadow and shape isn't going to be identical to one another. So I'm going to apologise for this tiny section here because my camera just completely lost focus. I got a new one over the holiday season and yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm still getting used to things. Apologise for this little minute section, but I'm going to explain things. So here you'll see that I've gone from very, very deep Mars black and then I've done a gradation of value, which in turn you can see where the colour starts to change the highest value being that cadmium red and it's the same rule that I'm applying to my rose so that's what we're looking at here and that's what I'm going off for today's tutorial and I'm also now going to show you a clearer version of what happened in that blurry section so again taking the cadmium red and the lamp black when I can get it out there we go fiddly little suckers. Right, there you go. Lamp black and red. Cadmium red is down on the palette. So, to show you what I did on that blurry section, because my, cram my camera decided to have a fit, I'm ever so slightly putting a little bit more of that cadmium red into the black. Now this will be for the shadows, like I just mentioned prior. And you'll see that I'm not adding too, too, too much red into the equation. All right, again, just for example, so with those small C shapes, but not being perfect with them, my darkest value is going to be on that center bit. Now I'm just doing this quickly for guidance. But you can obviously take your time on this when you work on it yourselves, if you want to work on it yourself, if you want to know how to paint a rose. I don't know where that came from. Right, so there you go. Now I'm just going to put a little bit more of the cadmium red. I'm just going to turn the camera just so you can get a better 
glimpse of that bit of the red, okay? And what I've done with the gradient, I've just gone in with my lighter, a little bit more lighter, and I've faded it out, but because I want the dark bit at the center, you'll see me do this later on anyway, because I didn't finish that center off. I'm gonna go back to the video, the tutorial in a moment. I'm hoping this makes a ton of sense, guys, but I'm making sure the lightest of value is out. So now you can see that's a pretty dark red that I've made there. So if I wash my brush off again, I'm going to go even lighter with more of the cadmium red. I'm just gonna lay that straight down. And you can see it fades and blends straight towards that darker bit and that's what, that's all I'm doing here and I know that that's like a really rough example but it's the best way that I can explain what is going on when I'm painting my rose again we're going really really lighter but then as I get back towards this bit I'm going to want the darker value to blend in to that red like that Otherwise it's not gonna go, otherwise it's not gonna look natural, it's gonna look too blocky. And we don't want that. So there's a bit more of a darker value. Just the cadmium red on its own, like so. And I'm going to blend out. And when it's applied to what I'm trying to show you guys on the tutorial, you'll see that it works. I'm going back towards the center again with the darker value blending that lighter red into the darker value. I actually leave the middle section until last anyway because I end up like coming back in to highlight that middle section where the petals are more exposed to the light. But that's what we're going off and I'll come back in with a bit more darker value if I feel that it's needed. And then we blend that darker value into that cadmium red to create that gradient. when it comes to layering up petals this is sort of the approach that I usually typically take again I'll just go back over with a little bit more darker value create some more shadow I'm only doing this quickly and roughly just so you get the idea now if I was to take my time and do a proper original piece for someone say for commission or even just for personal works. I'd be obviously taking a lot more time on doing this. And sometimes you can have a lighter valued petal over the top, so you see that? Now the reason why I don't use white at any point mixed into the red is because I want a red rose, not a pink one and adding white into the cadmium red can make my rose go very pink very quick and I did not want that. important as an artist to brush up on your observational skills become really familiarized with the subjects that you're working with really analyze what is thoroughly going on and the more you become familiar with your subject the more it does come naturally to you and you are able to paint with more confidence and it's not just about how light hits the subject now you've got a certain control of that if you've got the subject matter in the studio outdoors yeah it can sway a little bit it can be a bit different because weather's changing all the time but it's not just about light, I'm talking about form, texture, 
even the way it feels to handle if you can obviously hold that subject honestly that is how i've got to know subjects over time because you're trying to paint something that's three-dimensional onto a flat surface the subject will appear a lot more believable on the canvas once you have got to know that subject on a personal level is what i'm trying to explain here <laughs> And also find a subject matter that is going to test your abilities as an artist to do better. When I find a subject that is hard for me to work on, I won't just draw it or sketch it the once or, pa or paint it the once over. I'll do it like a multitude of times until I get to the point where I'm more familiarized with the subject. So then I'm more confident to paint from imagination in the future if I don't have that subject to analyze or I don't have that subject in front of me. <laughs> to spraying down just a standard yogurt lid and I've just used this just to show you guys a close-up of what's really going on and I also didn't want to cross contaminate my paint my titanium white paint with the red and the black so I've separated the palettes at this point in the process I also changed my water picture to make sure that I've got fresh water with the spray on that lid and also the additional added water from my brush I keep the paint remaining very translucent I don't want the white to be very opaque because I need the saturation of the rose to show through underneath the titanium white, giving the appearance and impression of frozen water on the rose. So what you'll start is to notice that as that titanium white dries, it will give the rosy appearance of starting to look frosty. And it's kind of just like eyeballing the situation until you get a kind of sweet spot with it and this may take you a few practices so just for the simplicity of the video this is like i say this is just a very narrowed down version as to what i would normally do but hey it, it works for me and this is the the best way that i found fit when it comes to doing frozen roses or frozen plant life once the transparent layer is down i'll tweak a few certain like key areas i'll go around the outer edges of those petals just with a little bit more opacity becoming a little less consistent with the water <laughs>
wraps up yet another sketch file. I do hope that this was incredibly helpful to somebody out there. Like I put in the disclaimer at the beginning, my way might not work for everybody, but hey, let me know if you have a dabble at it by leaving the hashtag across social media, Art of JC Benson. You can catch me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Have a good one. Bye for now, folks. Thank you.